Good morning, Cube community, and welcome back to Databricks Data and AI Summit. We're here in San Francisco. My name is Savannah Peterson. So delighted to be joined by the three smartest gentlemen at the show. Rob, George, and John, thank you so much for taking the time this morning. Pumps for our keynote analysis. George, I'm just going to say it, you're the best dressed one at the table. <laughs> I'm going to start with you. How's the morning going? What do you think? What are you hearing? Well, my morning's much brightier when now that you appreciate my my um, co couture. Is that the word? Yes, your couture. I will okay. always appreciate <laughs> nerd fashion in any okay. form, but particularly and when it it's is, on the desk it with is me. Nerd fashion when it's on me. <laughs> it's nerd fashion <laughs> when it's on all of us. That's okay. okay. You're okay. In, you're in good company. You're in good company. So, um, a couple things that that I took away. The the first thing. At the foundation, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy yesterday. Yes, like, love that analogy, okay. by the way. So, so in terms of like breathing and eating, like the, that's the data formats. Although yesterday, I think I said it was food and shelter. Um, there was a couple interesting things that they said about um, Iceberg, and it relates to work we did on Iceberg previously. Um, so um, Ryan Blue, who's the creator of Iceberg um, and uh, president of Tabular, he was on stage talking about how they're going to make interoperability go away as a, as a concern. Um, I think I mentioned this yesterday. Um, he had told us, uh, like a, on a show uh, a couple months ago, interoperability with Delta is like a pipe dream. Now the reason, that, the reason I, I, I bring that up is, yeah. I think it was not in his interest at the time. Now that he is part of Databricks, the goal for his organization is interoperability. Then he was working on like governance and like a policy engine. And the significance That's of this, a great point. this is there's significance competitively, which is now Snowflake um, is trying to open up within the parameters of what Iceberg can support. But Iceberg is now going to be oriented around Delta interoperability, not Snowflake compatibility. And I, I, I need to drill down on that, but you know, Ali says yesterday at the analyst briefing, we're not putting our thumb on the scale, but the, the goal is Delta interoperability, mm -hmm. not Snowflake interoperability. Well, I mean, that's clear. I mean, you, your work you did on with the interview points out, and the customers have validated, Rob, we talked about a little bit yesterday off camera, it was never, the bridge was too far to cross. Iceberg and Delta was never going to get there. It was, they're different formats. So buying tabular is Ali saying, this has to work. And the commitment, even on stage this morning on the keynote, it essentially was, let's get to work. And the goal is still the same, not care about the data format. So I think it was just a, a sign of their leadership to say, hey, we'll put down $2 billion to make it work because there's so much work on the formats there, they're different. And the customers we talk to say, hey, it's a, a lot different. It sounds easy, but it's not. And I, so I, I think that's the key. And I think it's, it's, it's all about not having lock-in, right? They realize that the compute engine and the storage layer, as we've talked about, for you know, ad nauseum for the last year, and really, you know, first ones digging deep into this was the fact that it isn't about controlling the storage layer. It's about what you don't want to have multiple copies of every data, how you bring the data together, and I, I think some of the other stuff that they started to go into that we'll talk about today yeah. from the keynote really starts to expand on what do you do with the yeah. data. Yeah. It's not about getting the data. It's it, that's the as we were talking about yeah. picks, and picks and axes and shovels, shovels. and everything. And <laughs> Lots of analogies what, on the cube this week. What, we're, we're going, we're going deep rush. into, in, <laughs> we're, we're going Paul Bunyan on this, well, right? We're going we're gonna to chop down some Minnesota trees and bring the smiled. wood and build it yes. up. And I, I think, but I, I think that's a big piece of it is the formats have to converge. And yeah. I, I think, you know, funny enough, yeah. a couple billion dollars will do that. Yeah. And the thing, the thing that jumped out at me, Savannah, <laughs> was that, the key, the, the, what jumped out at me was how they're setting the stage. It is a picks and shovels, so there's a lot of tech involved. So it's a very technical conference. Even today, we thought yesterday was technical. I know, I love when I came in and you it's said like, it's even more technical. They're going deeper. I'm like, that was it good. was even SQL more deeper. Code, it, it, Queries but on the Ali set, Ali set it up though with the professor from UW who basically, I mean, I was like watching a CUBE interview for the past year. We've been saying small, I think we're the first ones to point out small language models, our power law is playing out. What Ali did was interesting. He laid out with the professor from UW that essentially small language models is real, okay? And that it's going to get real fast and the, the models will interact. That sets up the North Star for all the developers who are doing the work to saying, hey, if you're not going to manage your really data properly, in a data engineering way, 
hence Unity Catalog, they're setting, up, they're setting up the narrative. And so I thought that was a compelling piece because that's going to motivate people to say, I got my data and I better get to work to set the table on the data. So that just leads in. Now the market's not ready for that yet, but it was a nice little mission impossible, don't count out small language models. So I think you're going to see a Cambrian explosion of apps handling small language models, and then once the engineering gets done, when all that under the, under the hood gets settled, open formats, scalability, migrations, that to me set the tone, I think, for the next five years for Databricks. John, there's another point, and uh, Savannah's, uh, you know, slow me down when, when George, you George, I to, love it. Okay. I want all the intensity. Okay, so I think there was another point in addition to yours about the small language models. She was up there, she's the leading researcher um, who's talking about making um, data efficient but common sense reasoning models. And, and I think the point they were trying to make is this is something that a research that Matei and yeah. who's this creator of Spark co-founder and Naveen who's head of Mosaic, they've, they've published research saying all real production systems are using multiple models. Yeah. And yeah. what she is, was up there saying is you build these systems out of multiple models. She's trying to show, yeah. they're trying to show leading yeah. edge research. And Mosaic, what they talked about yesterday is that you can build compound systems, multi-model yeah. systems. And so they're trying to differentiate from folks who just say, I need a frontier model and a vector database and I'm done. They called out OpenAI basically on the keynote. I mean, that's exactly what we've been yeah. reporting. And that's, that's the fact, that and that's what's yeah. going to happen. Model integration will be a factor, no doubt about it. Yeah. And then look, they want people to use Mosaic. Yeah. That's, the step, that's the play. Yeah. Hey, we got the tooling. Yeah. Yeah. Now do the data engineering, but, Unity Catalog. But they're right yeah. in the sense that it is going to be multimodal and it doesn't always have to be this massive LLM that's going right. to solve the problem. And I think you brought up a really good point. Right. I think you know we've had a lot of different conversations as we talk more about inference and latency and the chips that are going to end up prevailing in this game too, that matters and that touches on that. We talked yeah. to Grok, we talked to other players. You know, I feel like, and, and, and maybe this is just my hot take, but even when I was at one of the events last night hosted by Five Chan and Elation, who we had on the show yesterday, there's a real energy. I think, I think in, the, in the early couple of days of Gen AI, there was this culture of collaboration. Everyone was, let's do it together, let's figure this out, let's, let's find out what's going on. Right now, I feel like it's shots fired. It is very much, you're starting to see allegiances form, you're starting to see a little bit more, and I mean, quite literally at this conference, I feel like there, there's such a, there's heat between Snowflake and Databricks right now. You could, it was a conversation even at the party last night, which, yeah. which show was better. They're right on the back of each other. Big announcements right on the back of each other. And it definitely feels like people got their gloves out. Well, I think it's also a difference between they're both throwing out the word open source. And I, I think the and shots I love that, that everyone's going that direction, well, baby. But, but the short shots fired were really around yeah. open source. And today, Great again, yeah. going into Spark and yeah. how Spark, now Python's a first class citizen on Spark, yeah. how they're bringing all of these different pieces together across that is, is really a big piece mm -hmm. on top of Unity. And, yeah. I, and I, they went a lot deeper, and Matei went into a lot deeper totally. on yeah. why open source Unity today, and I thought that was a key Very good point, so Rob. Let's unpack Unity, because that was the big announcement here, and gotten things like metrics are in there. A lot of masking was a cool feature I thought was good. The, the unified governance was clearly the message here, and open sourcing it was a big strategy saying, hey, whether you're using our compute engine or not, use this for data engineering. So we're going to see, we talk about platform engineering a lot at the KubeCons of the world, now it's a data engineering conference, Rob. What is, guys, unpack the Unity impact, what is that, what does that mean for the market? Obviously they're open sourcing it. Unified governance, they brought up role access, privileges, they're seeing that come in. What's the hot, what's the deep dive, George and Rob? What's the impact of, of the Unity catalog? Okay, so um, as, as Rob was alluding to that, you know, there's been a lot of discussion of open source. It was a very dramatic moment on the keynote when Matei opens up his laptop and he like turns the Unity Git repo you yeah. know, public. <laughs> like, okay guys, it's this there. really yeah. is. It's, it's real. Cool, well, it, it, it was nice actually yeah. a big shot fired, right? Yeah. Because yeah. he said, exactly. in 90 days, no, right now. And, 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 and no, and but exactly the reason yeah. he said exactly. 90 We're doing days, it right now. the yeah. reason he said 90 <laughs> days was because last week, the Polaris catalog, which is just technical metadata for Iceberg, is it'll be open source and available in 90 days. And what he's saying is, 
Unity, which is a full technical metadata, operational catalog, business catalog, yeah. the, the, the significance is that the, the point of control, the source of truth for your data estate is moved from the database to the catalog mm -hmm. because all the tools look to see what does the data mean, where is it, what's its status, um, and how do I update it. They all go through the catalog now. Um, and then there's a little stub of an execution engine, but the point is where Snowflake was five years ahead in DBMS technology, yeah. um, you know, now Databricks shifted the playing field so that they're, it looks like a couple years ahead at least, on managing the metadata, which is the new source of truth. All right, so what's that mean for the data engineering uh, market? Because all the customers that we've been talking to are looking at either migrating legacy data warehouses into the cloud or to Unity directly. We hear from people here in the ecosystem doing that. And as they set the foundation for data engineering to enable the apps coming, what does that mean? What are people going to start doing? Does this have any real, does it move the needle, yeah. Rob? Yeah, I, and I, I think again, you know, we, we've been in sequestered in all the analyst discussions with them, and I would say that they're taking a serious look at the different personas, and taking it from a persona and a vertical perspective in how they go to market, and I think the data engineering team is one of the big ones where they've really been, they, they own data science, right? They own those guys. Those are, that's their key persona that they've been huge with, with AI in general. Now they're looking at it and with actual you know, Delta Lake and what they've been doing there and SQL being kind of first class citizen, the progress they've made with it, and now bringing in some of the things like Lakeflow Connect, which is how do I do those pipelines and how do I bring the data to bear? Because this goes back to, they're looking at it going, just get the data into something, into a common format, right. and then execute on top of it. We hope you execute on top of it using us. Oh, by the way, our catalog okay. will help catalog all that and bring it all together. But you really need to understand where is this all coming from, how do you get it together, and how do you really get it going again. Well, and I think that, to me, the data engineering people are a big persona. I think you're absolutely right. You, let, me, let me build on what Please, you said. Yeah. Okay, so, I think Rob is 100% right to identify data engineering because everything in the catalog, which we, we establish as a source of truth, starts from the, what's called the lineage graph. It's like, where did the data come from? What transformations were right. made? And then on top of that, you plug in the observability, you plug in the semantics, you connect it to your dashboards and your machine learning models, the metric definitions, but it all starts with the data transformations, which is what Rob was talking about. Yep. Now, um, Databricks actually was really strong on, on data transformations, the, the pipelines, and on the data science, but there's, what Snowflake is, is trying to be more competitive with the data transformations, price competitive. Functionality, they were, were very strong. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a whole, you know, issue around how do you, you know, there's FUD around, there's FUD around uh, the price comparisons. But ju just take one comparison, where Instacart was spending 50 plus million a year on Snowflake, and I watched their, I watched their presentation at, I think it was last year's Data and AI Summit here, um, where they moved the data pipelines, and then in their 10K, um, they reduced their spend on Snowflake from 50 plus million to 17, there was a big dispute. Snowflake said it's taken out of context, but the point is, those are very big and expensive workloads, and if it, it's very critical who gets them because that's where you build your catalog from. Okay, so you guys were sequestered for in the analyst area. It's like, oh, you guys did. You, you yes. I like that word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no, but you had deep dives, you had access. So what, how did they describe to you guys and what was the interaction with the analysts around this keynote and how did they deliver? What was your take on the, on the one, the setup? Yeah. What was it about this week? this day, what's, what was the reaction? I, on the I think reaction? again, a lot of the stuff they were hitting on today was, was key to what they look at as how they're setting themselves up for the next five years, and how they're laying down where their partner ecosystem is going to get to play, where they're going to have co-opetition, how they're going to go to market. I, I, I mean, one of the things that we had coming out of yesterday, and I, I, I pushed in on it quite quite a few times yesterday was, okay, help me understand what people should be thinking about. Do they get better pricing and things like that out of serverless? 
using you know, the way they're currently doing it. I think there's a control factor that's still there that people like to control and you know, mm -hmm. what we talked about, have their pets close. But I think one of the things that they brought up is that, you know, and Ali brought this up, was that, you know, again, they're massive spenders with the cloud providers. And other than a certain you know, top 10, top 20, top 50 spenders with those clouds, they're going to actually get better pricing than the vast majority of the customers. So pricing, is, pricing on the actual services themselves on the clouds is really not a big deal. And, and I think that that was really, a, I think, a key thing. I think there's some go-to-market stuff that they still need to work out there, but when you start to you know, peel back the onion, I think it was really important that they're looking at it and going, we're all in on this compute layer. And I think what was key, a key learning for me out of yesterday was, you can still have the data in your own account and use the serverless compute in their account. And I think to me, that's, that's a key differentiator. That's huge. And it's, it's massive, and I think it's underplayed in their messaging yesterday yeah. and today, and was something that, it, that was like a light bulb going off in my head, was like, yeah. wow, that's huge, because that, you have control of that data, and when you talk about governance, yeah. and security, and regulation, you can say I have this. Well, that was a great point. Also, uh, the other thing that was undervalued, I thought, was the AIBI piece. And if you look at, the, de at the demos mm -hmm. today, yeah. they yeah. were hardcore, really kind of like in the weeds, like, okay, we fixed these little knobs here, the, the BI's better. You right. know, the metrics piece, you saw the metrics piece, you saw DBT was in there, at scale, feeding into this. Yeah, at scale, DBT, and Cube, being first party citizens, yeah. sharing metrics in, and I, I think, to your point, I think, they, and we talked, we actually drilled, George drilled into this a little bit you know, <laughs> deeper, a lot deeper yesterday. Can't go into everything they, they said, but again, they're looking at it going, they're not going to be the metrics layer for everybody. And I, I think they want to be, don't get me wrong, and I think open sourcing and doing things like that, they're definitely leaning into that. But I think what they want to be able to do is make sure that it can be shared backwards and forwards and federated, truly yeah. federated. I mean, that, to me, getting those metrics in there like uh, with the data model is a huge democratization, user interface issue. That's going to make the business side of it because explode you, in value. Yeah. You, you, can't, you can't query the data, especially through natural language, without a metric definition layer because something's got to convert so the natural language into right. the very specific terminology. Now, we don't know all the implement, implementation yeah. details yet. Like, like, who's actually generating the query? Is it, you know, if it's a third party metric layer? But, but they're farther along um, than anyone else we've seen in terms of, you know, adding it to the, to the platform. Absolutely. Yeah. All and right, last question for you gentlemen, because I feel like we could talk all morning. What are you most excited about today? Last day? What conversation do you hope to have? Anything you're eager to learn more about? I, I think, well, George and I get to go deep dive into some of the AI side of things. I, I think I'm really looking forward to some of the customer conversations. We had some yesterday with JPMC, uh, T-Mobile, and uh, Unilever, who were on stage in our sequestered uh, little <laughs> battle room over there. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think some of the interesting things it brought up People are, people are just learning about some of this stuff, so I'm really excited about what next year is going to look like as well, based on some of the announcements. Because I think, I, I thought yes, last year was big, I think this year is even bigger with the announcements yeah. they've made. Yeah. Totally I, agree, what about you, George? I would add one, one thing, that if, if, this, if Unity is really becoming the source of truth for your analytic data estate, what they talked about with, with Federation, where they have connectors to other systems, you know, now, um, like not, a, not just looking into BigQuery or, um, or Postgres or Fabric, but then the sharing, you combine the, the federation and the sharing, it means they can make all the other systems look like extensions of your data lake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a big deal, and then I would just add as, a, as a, um, an addition to that, if the Databricks SQL engine is, is, has improved as much as they implied. They showed a graph where 73% performance improvement from same queries two years ago. We got to check if it's yeah. the exact same queries or if it's just data warehouse queries. Yeah. But if it's improving that fast, they are catching up. 
Yeah. yeah. And they actually yeah. talked about how they fingerprinted and hashed the query. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. they got into the real geek stuff, which <laughs> yeah, yeah. blew my mind on how far deep. I mean, because they want it, they want the data to be trusted. And I, I think yeah. I was I was blown away by a lot of this. Is that your way of stuff. admitting yeah. you're a geek? It was. It was I, I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're all nerds. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm fine with that. I mean, to me, what's <laughs> exciting about today is that it's very clear with Unity Catalog that every inflection point has a moment where there's some sort of standard de facto movement. Kubernetes, you saw that wave. Yep. I think this unified catalog idea, whether it's open, and is awesome. And I think Databricks is making a real give on the short term to play the long game. So that that means is they're committed to making the category grow. And again, this is like about every company we talk to is looking at the cost of a complete redo of data engineering, and the numbers aren't that bad. If you look at the cost with all the tooling, you could actually reset your entire company's entire data engineering platform right now with the tools available. So I think, I mean, it's still money, but I think if you're a big enterprise, you can actually reset your entire company. And I think that to me is going to give us a five-year uh, content market to talk about the cool stuff, but also customers. Yeah. and then build in generative AI era, and that's going to come downstream, but like right now all this talk is like, let's get standardized on the data and then build the data engineering, and then everything will click in, and I think that's when the needle will move. And we're not there yet, we're still on the, yeah. okay, get the, wire things up, make sure they work, but once the data engineering foundation's set, but, so, so to one thing to, to just because I happened to be geeking out while they were talking about it this morning, I went into ETR and looked at the data and the overlap between Snowflake and Databricks in certain accounts in the last couple quarters, you start to look at it, Snowflake's net score or their propensity to spend in those accounts has come down significantly. And I, I think to me that goes back to the is it real or not? And I think there's, yeah. if nothing else, there is some there is some heating up competition well, there, which well is we amazing. we reported on SiliconANGLE, and you guys did the bifurcation of budgets. The budget spend right now is on this on generative AI side, not running the light. So the projects that are going to get cut or stalled if they're not contributing to the Gen AI future won't get funded. So then it's like, okay, which ones are Gen AI projects? Right. So I think a re-engineering versus a bolt-on, anything bolting on to be kind of kind of like Gen AI that's not going to get funded. So I think this next year, what's exciting is, not to get a separate thing, but which budgets, who, what gets funded? Whole different so ballgame. that's going to be fun to watch, what gets funded, and I think, I think it's a redo. I think it's, we're going to see a redo in data engineering. I think you might be right. I think it's going to be interesting. Yep. Can't wait to keep talking about it with all of you, Rob, George, and John. Thank you so much right. for joining me this morning. Fantastic breakdown. Of the keynote. We're here at day two, well day three I suppose actually, of Databricks Data and AI Summit in San Francisco, California. My name's Savannah Peterson, you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.